speak up for me, Strong. I have something terribly important to say to you. Really? Something wonderful. Wonderful? Yeah. Sure thing. Now listen. I'll keep an eye open. And at the first opportunity, we'll slip away. All right. Where? Up there? That would be fine. Okay. Do you know, this is a strange old house. There's something peculiar and forbidding about it. Yes, there is. And a good reason for being so. How's that? The old Lucret mansion. Oh. Don't you recall the Lucret case? Vaguely. Uh, he was a packer. That's him. Yes, I remember. Seems that he... Uh... Killed his wife. That's right. Killed his wife. I wonder where. In this house? In this very room. Right over there. What do you think of Eve and John's actors? Oh, I don't know. I do you think she's in love with him, but doesn't know it? A fact to be considered, is he in love with her? Why not even quiet and love each other? And let it go at that. <laughs> well, that just seems earnest enough. But I'm afraid he and he will never marry. How is that? They have a single interest in common. Just what makes you feel that way, Mag? Look at him and clean up. Well, just like this. He doesn't belong in this environment. He was all papers make believe. How she got here is a long story. But I do know that he doesn't belong here, no among these people. He brought a here bride, and she was beautiful. That's the picture on the wall over there. It was hanging there when I moved in, and I've never taken it down. But why don't you? Well, I imagine that you'd wake up some night and hear her singing. No, but I've had some strange and horrible dreams since I've been living here. I dreamed one night that somebody came in here and murdered me. Oh, well, let's talk about something else. The second dream was a repetition of the first. I only have a vague idea of the murderer, but he seemed to have come from far away and was a vindictive sort of person who accused me of having you in here. Who is it? All right, I did. After all, I'm told that most dreams go by contrary and that only a few come true. I hope to forget the ones I had, though they seem to linger with me. In the meantime, how are you enjoying my party? Oh, sure. I'm having a wonderful time. You know, I enjoyed both songs that girl sang, but the last one was especially beautiful. It seemed to inspire one to love, didn't it? Yes, dear. And I have come to say that I love you. Oh, John. To begin with, there's neither polish nor refinement. What the people see and call that is part of the mirror, and a very thin veneer at that. Five years ago, she was dealing cars, the serving drinks, the fancy victims, when that now wealthy flamboyant creature was running a jump in federal school. She charged with Frankie and went to manage the most notorious rose house in Cicero. Later, a peculiar twist of fate. And here she is, 
A slashing hose that can come to Chicago is just so suitable. What's amusing? But before I ask you to accept my love here, I feel that I should explain my plans for the future. Tell me more about your love for it, John. It thrills me, sir. I want to talk of nothing but love, dear. It means so much to me. John, you make me so happy. Oh, isn't it beautiful to plan, dear? Why do you not know it? Men have not even guessed it. But I have some big plans in mind also. I've had them for a long time. And I want to tell you about them. And I'll bet you've been planning on doing the very same thing I have. Just such good money in it. Well, I'm fairly certain that it's not. I'm sure you haven't even pictured what I have in mind. In fact, what I'm all prepared to do. Right, my dear. Then I'll describe my plans first. Then see if we have the same thing in mind. Well, go on and do it. Dress the pig and still, and he'll wire in the murder the first opportunity. Now, mark my words. This time, Mr. Temple on her part isn't going to last this long. Sooner or later, she'll return to the racket in this game. I'll be doing the last bet. That was in less than two years from now. She'll f***ed over her face and turn this very house into a diet and low down as tranquil as this and ever was. But what about Satchy? Did he love her? Oh, forget it. He doesn't love her. He's only infatuated and thinks he does. Oh, come on, Madge. You can fall down a base. It is part that you are misjudging her. You ain't doing nothing of the kind. It's you who don't understand. It takes a woman to understand another woman. And I may understand either two boys. As for that is, he's a fine man. When he proposes to see them, they're both soft and emotional. He'll unburden herself to him. And that'll be the end of it. But it's my deal. Go ahead. Cut it off. You go into business, Peter? Why, what kind of business? A club, dear. You see, we can use this house for the purpose. A club, Edith? Well, I haven't the least idea what you're talking about. What kind of a club? Social club, John. What other kind could be like? Kind of Frankie Dixon run. You understand? Great guns, Edith. You can't mean it. Why, have you ever been to Frankie Dixon? Have you any idea of the kind of place you've gone? Of course I've been there. You understand what goes on. But she's making money. Good money. More money than any other woman I know. So, what difference does it make what goes on? This much difference, as far as I'm concerned. Why, I wouldn't have anything to do with such a business. But I'm not against every principle that I possess. Why, well, she runs a gambling joint. Bootleg. Thanks for clearing house members. Runs a policy wheel. Oh, she looks up in the right completely. In short, her place is a joint. A prize. And you? Well, she can get some money. You are all that is what counts. Mikey Dixie's got the money. Everybody envies her. She can have anything she wants. Now, for a handsome man like you, that's up by a clever woman to so open up a place like hers in this location. And with the following detail, why we can get it. Oh, Sam, I know that battle. Why, I wouldn't be connected with a guy like Frankie Dixon if I was assured of making a million dollars. The queen of the underworld. No. I loathe even the idea. I appreciate your point of view, John. You don't have to be wicked because of the length of our business. If they want to blow their money in, trying to beat us out of ours, it seems a fair exchange to me. Thanks, if it's so disgustable to you, you could stay in it a few years, get out, then get out and into something... More now listen, Edith. Nothing could be further from my mind. I can't do any good in anything to which I'm so much opposed as that kind of business. But if I had my way, 
I would outlaw such places and put all chemicals like Frank and this thing in jail. Well, I hope you understand how I feel about it. Now, that's the way you feel about it, eh? I just man. Good evening. You need to buy yourself a little red toy balloon. Go on up to heaven and get an angel for a wife. You're entirely too nice if you're living in Chicago. Look at me. Well, I'm sorry, Edith, but that's the way I feel about it. I understand. I don't see how I overlooked it before. But you're not like other men. You don't drink and you don't stay out late at night. And that's the night you had never even asked me to kiss you. Just a sitting, that's all. And I wouldn't have you on a bet. Now, oh, that's unfair, Edith. You have no right to call me unpleasant names. There are plenty of men who don't drink, who don't stay out all night. And there are plenty of men who can sit in a higher moral regard for the women that they would love and honor. They're all women. I'm a normal man in every way, but I simply will not have anything to do with any wicked in the world business. I'm sorry we don't agree. Since my plans are so entirely different from those that you've set forth, well, I'll not annoy you by explaining. Perhaps we'd better just forget all about it. And maybe about his job. What do you say? Oh, come on. Yes, what? Well, goodbye.
Come here. Why, hello, Baptist. Oh, Grubble, come right here. Come on, boy. I got your groceries from town. Okay, let's get over there on the show, Grubble. All right, take a seat. Tell me all the news. All the news? Huh, that's a reason. Well, speaking of news reminds me of something. Yeah? He has some new news. No. Yeah. I'm going to watch them, please. Moved in from Indiana a few days ago. Hey, that's interesting. Who are they? Their name is Stewart. The family consists of an old man and two boys. I see. She only lied one of the officers, how old is the girl? Moreover, she is black. Boy, this is getting hot. Tell me more about it. They're white people, I suppose. Oh, yes. Now, ain't that funny? That's funny. You asking me if they are white people. What difference does that mean? Anyway, you're not all colored, are you? Oh, yes, brother. I'm all colored. But ain't this sort of me? That's some white blood in you? I understand me. Some people are smoking. That is exactly what you understand. Well, that's quite true. But you see, if you're part white, part colored, it's all the same. You're considered all colored. Don't worry about playing boy like that, eh? Well, come on. Don't worry about the new neighbor. Of course. Well, I've only spoken to the old man twice, but I don't think they have very much money. In fact, I think they are very poor, and he wants to hire one of the boys out. So I told him that you needed a hired man, and he wants to see you. So what should I tell him? You'll come down to see him, or he'll come up to see you. Well, I'll go down and see him. Let me see. Sunday. That'll give me a chance to see this beautiful daughter you speak of. I can see a photo for her right now, big boy. Yes, you. But you've got a rival already. Yeah, who's that? Who gets that? Oh, sure. He's right across the road from her. Well, that gives him the inside track. Well, I've got to be gone. I'll tell him that I saw you, and you'll be down to see him. Okay, double. Thanks. Well, all right. Come on, Dr. Now, Bill, George and I can take care of everything about the home. And the Mr. Baptist who's coming here to see about the hired man who wants you to work for him. Well, you can work for him, Watson, so he ain't work for him. But where will I eat? He's a back there, you know. Well, I suppose you eat at home. Although he don't go to the land around here, so I understand, but he's a bachelor, and it'd probably be all right with him for you to board at home. In a way, that can all be settled when it's full. But you know, I guess. All right, good morning, Bill. Good morning. Come right in. Come right in. Thanks, Jerry. Looks so funny when you saw me. I thought something would happen. Bill looks like this. I'm looking for a man who wants to hire me. I thought it was him when you knocked, that's why I looked surprised. But we're always glad to welcome you, to have you call, so come around in. Be seated, and make yourself the world. Thanks, Jared. Well, you want to hire Bill out, eh? Well, we're very poor at needy, Fresca. And if Bill could get a job, it would help us out a whole lot. He could that. I see. You're looking for this man Baptist, I suppose. He's yes. the only one I know of around here who needs a hired man. Yes, it's Mr. Baptist that I'm expecting. <laughs> Funny about that fellow. Funny? How's that? He's what do you mean? He's a solid man, you know. Not so. Sure. Did anyone ever tell you that he was? No. Well, what business does that mean? A lot with me. I ain't got nothing for them people to do. I'm from Arkansas, you know. Well, that probably expands the way you feel about it. Well, from Scotland. And to me, a man is a man for all of that. Oh, of course, of course. That's all right. No harm done. 
And we shall continue to be friends in spite of a little difference of opinion with regard to races. Oh, in the meanwhile, how are the folks? Wagner's is busy putting the house in order. I'll go tell her that you're here. Arrived? Yep, downstairs now, waiting for you. Waiting for me? Why, that can't be possible. He doesn't know me yet. I mean, Duke Prescott is down there, not beyond that. Oh, shut up. What's the matter, Agnes? Don't you like Mr. Prescott? No, Father, I do not. Perhaps you are sorry to hear me say it, but why pretend? Bill Prescott and I are not alike in any way. And now you know how I feel about him. I thought it was Mr. Baptist. Oh, Mr. Baptist. Well, Mr. Baptist isn't coming to see you, Eddie. He's coming to see me about hiring Bill. Oh, Father, forgive me. Of course he is not coming to see me. I didn't mean it that way. But I have heard so much about him since he came out here. How he acquired all those land, cattle, horses, and then Trouble told me that he was calling this morning to see you about hiring Bill. It put me all of luck and made me anxious to see him. What he looks like, all that. Well, of course, my dear, we have to put him to stand and work in him as we do everybody. But the first thought brought news regarding him that there was no one ever seen before. That was it. He's a colored man. A colored man? Do you mean that, that he's a Negro father? Well, a uh, Negro, yes. A, a black man. Oh. Well, of course. That doesn't wouldn't make any difference as far as we're concerned, would it? Why no, father. Of course not. That's what I told Prescott. Prescott? Oh, yes. It was he told you. Yes, he's good. You know, that fellow is prejudiced. I didn't like the way he referred to Mr. Jackson. You know, I judge a man according to his honor and ability. That is the only fair way to judge anybody. I mean, you know what he is, my dear? He sees the face the same way. You are so good, Bob, that I have always hoped you Thank you, Bob. You say that he's a... A black man, father? No, dear. I said a Negro means a black person. I've never seen Mr. Baxter. Then, then, why don't be black after all? Of course not. Also, some color people when we pass through Chicago on our way out here, and many the street light. Why, some of them were as, as light as of nature. Of course, of course, of course, of course, yes, yes. I think I'll give George call him over. I'll go out and see what he wants. Pardon me. My name is Baptist. I'm calling to see a Mr. Stewart about hiring his boy. Is he in? Yes. Yeah. Would you come in? Sonny. Who 
please be seated. I'll call Frank. Frank. Oh, 
Je zou die even door gaan zien in Kijl. Zie je? Hé, hey, kom nou met me. Dat komt dat van me. Waarom zie je dat hier in de ziet? Er was something funny about you. I couldn't trust him at all. My darling, why are you weeping? What has happened? I married her and lived happily until she died. God rest her soul. Now you know the truth. I would have told you many times before, but what to be explained. I'm sorry now that I did not. Tell me why Helen wrote me the letter. He thought I was in one race, while he took another, and that he was ostracized, that we could not be happy. Then I don't care of it. Then never. It's going away. I'll show you home for two. That's it. It's yesterday. It won't be done now. And it's all to reach him. You saw him, my dear. You saw him. He may not have gone. I'm glad now that he loves it. But be calm, my dear. Be calm. I have a strange fear. And tells me that he will do as he has written. And I need you, Father. I'm so. I'll phone Bill. Turn him up to his house and bring him back to you. Tell me, Father. Oh, and bring him back to me.
John Baptist, you nigger. Oh, how sweet it makes me to see you again after all these years. And I'm glad to see you, too. But the years have certainly dealt kindly with you. Why, you're as beautiful and charming as ever. Oh, John, you flatter me. Won't you uh, sit down? No, I won't sit down. But I want you to come with me, if you don't mind. I want to talk with you, and I have not. All right, Eva. <laughs> Oh, 
wrong, John? Why have you treated me so shamefully? Shamefully, Edith? Well, what do you mean? You did not write me a scratch after leaving Chicago over five years ago. I know I have to see you. But that was not enough for you to put me out of your life altogether, as you have done. Now, Edith, you're all upset for nothing. Well, I forgot all about the way you treated me long ago. But I haven't forgotten, John. I shall never forget. Because it was my selfish, unwise, and insane ambition that drove you from me, out of my life, and all what I have become. You would have recalled you before you even left me. You had given me half a chance. No, Edith, why all the excitement? You know, I didn't mean a thing to you then. And I certainly don't hold anything against you now because of what happened five years ago. But I'm telling you, John, I have never gotten over it. I knew before you left me that I loved you more than anything else in the world and wanted you. I would have gone anywhere with you, done anything for you. You had only to ask. You have suggested something. Oh, dear, you don't realize what you're saying. Why, I... I realize fully, John Baptist. And I have been unhappy ever since. Terribly embarrassing for a woman to have to make such an admission. I love you, John. Always have. And always will. Oh, Edith, don't you catch my point? Conditions have changed as regards us. You belong to one phase of life, and I another. True as it is, I'm fond of life out there in the wilderness, and I'm sure that you wouldn't like it. Then, don't you see, if you fail to like it, you couldn't very well appreciate my efforts. And that would make me very unhappy. I would appreciate what you're doing out there, John. I would be as happy with you anywhere. Under any circumstances or conditions. You intoxicate me with your confession, Edith. You do not know it. But I, too, have been unhappy. And I'm afraid I've been lonely. Who take me with you, young? Trust me and love me. And I shall never fail you. Something has happened that makes it imperative that I take a wife. But I can't fancy your being happy out there. I just can't believe that you would. <laughs> But as I have said, I can't believe that you would be willing to leave a place like this with all its people, music, glamour, and settle in a land where the only music you could depend on hearing after the sun went down would be that of yelping coyotes from the distant hills, moaning like some dying thing in the night. With you by my side, it would thrill me, John. Oh, I can love it. But, Edith, are you sure? This is all so sudden. I'm afraid if we act hastily, we shall both live to regret it. I shall regret only if I miss you. If you fail to take me and love me and protect me. Then I shall take the chance. That is, if you are willing. Oh, I think I'm willing, John. Very well, then. When shall it be? Whenever you will. Tomorrow, if you like. Tomorrow. I shall call for you at 11. I'll secure the license. Then we'll find the minister and have him marry us. Oh, John, this is wonderful. Imagine it. Come tomorrow, I shall be fast in your arms, holding you my husband. Kiss me, John. Ah, now we are for it. I will remember in title, they told me while some time ago.
That ain't it. Pardon that. Mr. Django is outside. He wishes to see you. Shall I send him in? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want to. I don't want to see it. Pull him out quick, studio, for so good. Gonna burn the gas from now on. Yes, yeah, come along. Uh-huh. Very well, Larry. You? Yes, my fellow. What are you doing here? How dare you enter without knocking? You told me once that I need not knock. So come on in and surprise. And I've told you since not to come again. I do not love you anymore, and I don't want to. Now, will you go? Not so hardly, my angel. Not so far. You may be free with me, but I am not free with you. I told you once when you said for it, that Abyssinian love was sacred, and that you should not play it. I was listening. You overheard what you said to the stranger. You are promised to marry him tomorrow. I also heard what you said to the maid. So I'll come for an understanding. There is no further understanding, Miss Tina. I'm sure that you for good. Now we you go. Oh, but there's so much of importance to talk about here. Now I recall how this came about. How it started. How it has grown. And what it means to me. And then don't be so hurried. Don't be so fast. I don't want to go into all of that. It's not necessary. I'm going to marry the man I love in a few hours. In the meanwhile, I'm tired. I want to get to the sea. So you can play the innocent, blushing little bride when summer starts, right? Listen, Django. I'm selling this place to Jerry McGee, and I'll ask him to keep you. I'll put that into the bill of sale. I'm not thinking of the future, my beauty. I'm living in the past. I'm thinking of how I came to this country. I had no thoughts of this. This what I had down to. I was only looking forward to the day when I would be free. Have my degree. Go back to Africa and teach my people the things that I have learned. Then I met you. At a party where decent people had gathered to pay me honor. You had no right to be there. It was a party for good people, clean people. But you took them, you met me, and flattered me. You say the part of a sweet and innocent girl and sat to go to you. You asked me to come to see you. And when I did, you still led me on to feel that you were all you pretended to be. Uh, I didn't know you think you had led me on. You ought to have heard of this question. What? 
You told me so long time, love you. You didn't want to return to Africa. That the women there were not beautiful or cultured. And that you couldn't love them. You told me to leave school. You told me to smoke that those filthy heifer. To drink. To gamble. To do the many evil things that have ruined me. I wanted to finish my education. I wanted my degree. I... <laughs> Oh, you're sexy. What you do? Tell me more about education. Listen. We've got too many educated Negroes now in this country. Loaded down with the degrees and starving to death. Besides, what would you do with more if you had it? You know, Negro? I'll tell you. You do know? Why, Negro can't even get a job waiting for people in a decent hotel anymore. So why stand there and whine and argue? Besides, you think nobody's relative would have done it anyhow. And you've no right to say that I ruined you. I wanted to finish the training I sought the seas for. I wanted to become a doctor or a lawyer. Yes, a doctor. You have too many of them also. Doesn't the Puma compel to sell you to? Yes. You commit sexual murder and you commit a living. And as a lawyer, you'd probably be a psycho. Then a lot of police for it. Getting drawers out of jail. Took him into custody. And I want you to go, do you hear? Do you? No. No, no. I'm sorry. But I suppose you're right. All of my hopes, dreams, and ambitions, however, are shattered. My modern population for you has ruined me. There's only one thing left. Suicide. Rat, you haven't got the nerve. Haven't I? If I had a gun, I'd prove it to you. I'd kill myself right here before your eyes and come back after death and haunt you for the rest of your worthless life. yellow. Here's a revolver. Don't shoot yourself here. Take it to your room and pull the work. I'm going to see how much nerve you've really got. Who well, heard you, Rex? You haven't even got the nerve to see your room. Let's shoot yourself. All this boast about wanting to do somebody is just so much honey rock.
after all. Why should I kill myself? Ralph Fowle has just been crowned king of Abyssinia. My own Abyssinia. And if you can eat me, so I'll change my mind. I'm going back there. But before I do so, I shall make up for all the terrible things I've done here by sending you where you belong. Sitting so that you never ruin another man. No. Well, you see, of course it's all in the street. That fish hasn't killed anyone. You see, Pat, the woman said that when he was here, and he's now in trouble, and he wanted to see me. You dare go to him? His father, it's me, that he is ready, and he is trouble, and I to go to him, to me, and stop. What? Why, you poor dear. Of course you me, and I'll give you the money to do so. Just wait a moment. I'll call George and tell him to harness the mare. Yes. You say you knew this woman five years ago? Never saw her since until last night when you were seen following her in her dressing room? Well, you were the last person seen with her before her body, just to death, was found in this same dressing room. Now, please, of course, I'm just shocked at such a terrible thing. But I have no telling whatsoever to commit such a horrible deed. Why, we want you up from Tommy, and you got to put down here and we'll go to talk, see? Father, see? Just the lad from Gwen and his And there was something about her murder. Now I found him to his room, where he sat for the thing, to ride the house by that stairway, for a taxi and go up to the room and I'm asking, just as he was going to say to I think you will discover by questioning him. And he knows a great deal more about the murder than he's willing to tell. Meanwhile, here is one of the way from the club who can tell you a few things. That will throw some light upon the subject. All right, Matt, let's have it. 
Well, just a minute. Who are you? My name is Jerry Park, and I work at the Two Balls Club. This man, you, you should know what you do, But they ain't been getting along so well lately. Last night, I saw this gentleman coming to that way, and the Two Balls saw him and invited him to stay. After they went up, I saw John go follow. His face is tough, and he was mad. Then after a while, I saw this man come down and leave. And after he had gone, I had to pass with two balls through, and I heard her and Jan go fall. I heard her say, Now will you go? But I didn't hear no more. Then a little later, I saw him come out and leave by his side door. And after he had gone, they discovered the two balls part. It's a lie. It's a lie. I didn't kill him. Somebody told me that. I, I was... Uh, easy, boy. Easy. I've heard enough to let this man here go. How do you hell? Lock him up. All right, Mr. Betsy. Sorry if you had a more agree. Oh, that's perfectly all right, sir. I'm sure I can prove him my innocence, but naturally I'm glad he's proven so soon. Good day. Good day, sir. Why, you? Yes, John. I. And I have come to help you. Can you? You haven't killed anyone, have you, dear? Well, certainly not. They thought the real murder, and I'm saying. But what are you doing here? In Chicago. Because of you? I am so glad they found out who did it, and you are free. Meanwhile, something has happened to you also. And if you can help me from here, I'll be glad to tell you all about it. Well, I'm stopping Mr. Bob, and I'd be this for a wonderful father. He might go there, if you don't mind. I do not mind. Yes. 